The last three years have been rough for Democrats. In 2016, they lost the Senate, the House of Representatives, and the White House, despite pretty much everyone saying that Hillary Clinton was guaranteed the presidency. And that in turn prompted moments like this. If Trump wins, how about bursting into tears and screaming for the next 45 minutes? Well, America is crying tonight, and I mean literally crying. Get your abortions now, because <laughs> we're going to be and we're going to have to live with it. You're awake, by the way. You're not having a terrible, terrible dream. Also, you're not dead and you haven't gone to hell. This is your life now. This is our election now. This is us. This is our country. Tens of millions of Americans are totally fine with a man who's driven almost purely by racism and sexism and Islamophobia, a hatred of everyone unlike him. But now we're on the verge of a new presidential election, and this time around, there's actually a lot of pressure on Democrats to not play fair to break a couple of things here and there in order to get their policies passed. What do I mean by that? In this video, I'm going to be talking about two things that people are actually wanting from the next Democratic president, and I'll give you a hint. They're not exactly democratic. A couple of days ago, there was a story in Politico talking about how certain progressive activists want the next Democratic president to promise to pack the Supreme Court. The argument goes, Republicans unjustly stole Neil Gorsuch's seat on the Supreme Court from Merrick Garland, even though Republicans were in the majority and they had the power to block a nominee legally. And Brett Kavanaugh, oh don't get them started on Brett Kavanaugh, he's a partisan hack, he's a person whose very presence on the Supreme Court is enough to undermine the entire American judicial system. So now the appropriate response according to leftists is an idea so radical that even Franklin D. Roosevelt gave it up, to expand the size of the Supreme Court to something like 15 justices, simply to give the next Democratic president the chance to appoint a whole bunch of justices all at once. According to Politico, the recently created, aptly named Pack the Courts has raised more than $500,000 to jumpstart its efforts and has partnered with Demand Justice, a progressive group founded in 2018 that is trying to match Republicans' organizing efforts around the judiciary. If you think this idea sounds crazy, well first off, you're right, but it's a crazy idea that could actually happen. Demand Justice, that progressive activist group that I just mentioned, is run by Brian Fallon, one of Hillary Clinton's former press secretaries, and he's a per person in the party who people actually listen to. Just last week, one of the Democrats actually running for president, Pete Buttigieg, actually announced that he was in support of the idea. He said that it would basically no more undermine the independence of the judiciary than all of the partisan operations that have been in the past, and honestly, it really sounded like he was open to the idea of drastically increasing the size of the Supreme Court. So what is so crazy about the idea of packing the Supreme Court? Well, apart from the fact that having one president appoint something like six judges to one court is a crazy power trip, and something that completely wrecks the idea of the independent judiciary, it's a self-defeating idea at best. Let's just say Democrats do take control of the presidency and the Senate in 2020, and they try and go through with some kind of a plan like this. Before long, you've got a Supreme Court with 15 justices that just rubber stamps whatever the president wants, and it's debatable about whether people would even listen to the decisions of such a Supreme Court. In addition, when Republicans next took control of the presidency and the Senate, they would probably just do the same thing. They would increase the Supreme Court size even more. And so before long, you've got a Supreme Court the size of Congress that is absolutely not independent at all, and who no one listens to anyways, because what is it even there for? It's just designed to do what the president and Congress want it to do. As if destroying one of the three branches of government wasn't enough, Democrats also have a plan to railroad even more of the stuff they want through Congress. Senator Elizabeth Warren has floated the idea of completely abolishing the Senate filibuster in order to get Democratic Party's policies passed like the Green New Deal and Medicare for All. The idea to eliminate the filibuster is really pretty simple. It's just designed to cut Republicans out completely from any policy discussions. After all, if those pesky Republicans are going to keep getting in the way of what I, President Elizabeth Warren, know to be right, well, we gotta keep all options on the table. Look, this idea is horrible, and honestly, I don't even really know where to start to address this. America is a great country not only because it gives the right to the majority to control government, but it protects the right of the minority to stand up for their opinion. That was one of the purposes when the founders created the American Republic, and it's one of the reasons why they actually feared democracy a lot, because they were worried that the majority would just tyrannize the minority. Another reason why the filibuster is so valuable is it means there aren't huge policy shifts from one administration to another. I mean, think about it this way. Again, let's just suppose that Elizabeth Warren takes the presidency in 2020, Democrats could take control of the Senate, they get rid of the filibuster, and all of a sudden they just go on a passing spree. They pass Medicare for all, they pass the Green New Deal, they pass sweeping gun control. And then all of a sudden, people are completely fed up with that in four years. Four years later, 2024, Republicans take back control of the presidency in the Senate, they just undo everything, and maybe they pass 
even more sweeping tax cuts, so they do something else that the Democrats really do not want them to do. All of a sudden, you've got absolutely no continuity from one administration to another, and that's one of the reasons why a supermajority for passing big legislation is in place. I mean, think about it this way, we've already seen the effects of not having the filibuster in the past. Obamacare was passed without a single Republican vote because Democrats used a special technicality in the books to pass it with just a simple majority, and Republicans did the same thing last year with the Trump tax cuts. I don't think you could find a single elected Democrat who thinks that the Republicans' decision to pass the Trump tax cuts last year without a single Democratic senator in support was a good idea, and I know you can't find a Republican who thinks that the Democrats' decision to pass Obamacare earlier without a single Republican in support was a good idea. And President Elizabeth Warren's solution to all of this is, well, Republicans did it, Democrats did it, so why bother doing it at all? I would argue that, in fact, the opposite track is needed, where we're actually going to bring back the filibuster for more things, but that's never going to happen in today's political climate. Look, patent the Supreme Court and eliminating the Senate filibuster both have one purpose in common. They're designed to consolidate more power into the executive branch to give the president more power to get Congress to do what he or she wants. No matter what happens in 2020, the next president needs to remember, they're the leader of the free world, and the decisions that they make and the decisions that they support have a lot of impact. Whatever happens in 2020, it's really important to remember that America is a democracy first and foremost, and it's a democracy that preserves the right of the people to stand up for their opinion, not a monarchy that gives the president unlimited power to do whatever he or she wants. But with that said, that's it for this video, so please be sure to share it to spread the message, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and with that said, I will see you next time.